Hello and welcome my friends and viewers to this week's episode of Legend Lore, where I draw and talk about monsters, characters, gods, and other things from D&D 5th edition, all while giving a small but quickly digestible history about them. Together we'll go over their history within the game, how they're utilized in the modern edition, and how you guys can utilize them in your own games. This week we'll be looking at one of the three brides of Strahd von Zarevich, often identified as the most vicious and bloodthirsty, Belenta Popovsky. Now, a bit of a warning. This video will contain less official D&D lore and is a compilation of the resources and development that the D&D community itself has put into reworking and building upon Curse of Strahd. So material from things like Mandy Mod and Dragna Carta's Curse of Strahd reworked guides as well as other things will be referenced frequently. Everything that I reference I'm also going to include in the description of this video, and I also highly recommend checking out Lunchbox Heroes' series on running Curse of Strahd for some great advice and tips, which we're going to also go over in this video. But with all that out of the way, let's go right into it. Valenta Popovsky is one of the three brides of Barovia's dreadlord, Count Strahd von Zarevich, the main villain of the D&D 5th edition adventure module, The Curse of Strahd. Obviously patterned after the classic Brides of Dracula, of which most of Strahd's demeanor, aesthetic, and basically everything is based off of, Valenta is identified by most sources as the youngest and newest of the brides, all of whom have been turned by Strahd and serve him in some kind of capacity. Appearance-wise, Valenta Popovsky is often identified as having short black hair, and olive skin tone, or as olivey as an undead can get, and the traditional red eyes of a vampire, almost always seen wearing a pale gold dress and horned platinum mask made in the shape of a skull. If you wanted to go the slightly more demented route like I do, perhaps consider making the mask an actual skull of a person or a creature that she'd killed, wearing it as a sort of trophy and fashion statement at the suggestion of another bride like Lidbilla or Anastrasia. With that said, please ignore the fact that my depiction completely disregards all of these details, save for the mask, as I, like many dungeon masters, have my own idea of how Valenta should really look like, and I'll share my inspirations later on in this video. In terms of her backstory, most sources identify Valenta as an orphan who was actually a native to the village of Barovia itself, growing up to become a prostitute who eventually developed a penchant for killing and dismembering her clients in gruesome ways. While she initially succeeded in getting away with these acts, discovery of her murders forced her to flee, eventually being chased off to Castle Ravenloft where she offered herself to Strahd as thanks for taking her in. Having sensed her murderous compulsions and obvious penchant for barbarism, Strahd turned her into a vampire almost immediately, if only to add a actual purpose to all of her killing in the form of having to feed on her victims. In terms of her personality, most depictions have Valenta as a true psychopath, obsessed with the idea of pain and using her vampiric powers to torture and gruesomely kill her victims as a form of entertainment. As such, she is the most reckless and willful of the three vampire brides, her viciousness and almost bratty nature often testing the nerves of both Strahd and the other brides. She's constantly pushing boundaries and testing the limits of her peers, only reined in by the obsessive belief that Strahd will love her for all eternity almost flat out ignoring any warnings from Ludmilla about how the Count has become infatuated with the latest incarnation of Tatiana, his true love. All this is really to say that Valenta is the most physically violent and volatile of the three brides, a blunt instrument who is perfectly fine with getting her own hands dirty when it comes to dealing with any adventurer who dares cross into Barovia. She is known for trying to goad the PCs into attacking her whenever they come to visit Castle Ravenloft, leading them into traps or egging them on until they're close enough for her to take a bite. In regards to her relationships with other characters, her devotion to Strahd is unquestionable, serving faithfully as a spy, scout, assassin, and attack dog of sorts. However, due to her being both the newest and most willful bride, she may be seen as the most expendable and is often the first thing that the Count might send out to a party to test their abilities, not really caring if she comes back or not. With that said, the other members of Castle Ravenloft have a variety of different perspectives. Rodin sees all of the brides as mere distractions for his lord in between the incarnations of Tatiana so Valenta would be no different in his eyes. Ludmilla, who is the first and oldest bride, would see her as nothing more than an annoying pet with not a shred of actual depth to her personality. The second bride, Anastrasia, on the other hand, may see the usefulness in Valenta's need for bloodlust and violence, sending her to commit all manner of murder in order to keep all of Barovia trembling in fear, without actually having to risk the physical safety of any of the more important members of Strahd's entourage. Now, in terms of role-playing Valenta at the table, there are several approaches that you can take depending on if you want her to be seen as demented or playfully biting. The first depiction, which is the one I often like to go for, has her reveling in her animalistic behavior, climbing on walls, perching on furniture, and oftentimes walking on all fours whenever Strahd and the others aren't around to correct her. She'll get in the party's personal space and maybe even sniff them, commenting on the scent of their blood and how much she'd just love to have a taste of it. Characters that I like to use as inspiration for this kind of version of Valenta include Jinx from League of Legends, Harley Quinn from the Batman comics, specifically more so her depiction in the Arkham City video game, and Tira from Soul Calibur. 
The second approach that you can take is a little bit more of a conniving, playful Valenta, leading into her goading, antagonistic behavior. She'll spy on the characters to figure out what it is that they care about and threaten it, as well as maybe even try to gather some information for Strahd and the other brides, whilst also revealing it to the party in a way that almost wishes for them to attack her. Inspirations for this version of the character include Catwoman from Batman, Katarina from League of Legends, or perhaps Blackfire from Teen Titans. Regardless of whichever approach you choose for the character, most parties probably won't even hear of Valenta specifically unless it's in a passing mention by one of the brides as a whole. As such, if you want to give the brides a little bit more depth as side characters, you can delve into their own personal backstories and have players learn who they were before they were turned into the brides. In Valenta's case specifically, before she was turned into Strahd's newest spawn, she was a prolific serial killer operating within the town of Barovia and killing her prostitution clients. As such, her actions could have carried weight into the Barovia of the modern day. Maybe folks still whisper of her serial killings and insist on the superstition that she still prowls through the village at night, her bloodlust even more insatiable now that she's a vampire. If you wish to introduce her to the party sooner, you could make the superstition true, with Valenta creeping through the village in the dead of night before being spotted by the PC who is on watch, or possibly even have her target one of the PCs explicitly while they're sleeping. Furthermore, perhaps the party can meet an NPC who was one of Valenta's victims who managed to escape and survive, albeit horribly scarred and disfigured. This can give the party an early introduction to the brides, and maybe her actions even had ramifications in the form of causing Barovia's people to be distinctly mistrustful of prostitutes, hence why they are seldom found in the village. Now with roleplaying covered, when it comes to running Valenta in combat, it is referenced that she is supposed to be the most physically imposing of the trio, and as such, to me, she could be presented as a wild barbarian who delights in tearing her opponents to shreds with her bare hands, or possibly a deadly assassin who can slink and vanish within the very shadows of Castle Ravenloft. For the former, the barbarian's rage and other class features such as danger sense and brutal critical can add to the primal animalistic way that she approaches combat, the Path of the Beast Barbarian being the most perfect for realizing that vision. Perhaps she even makes use of the Path of the Beast's Call the Hunt ability to empower a legion of her own starved vampiric spawn. This way, she doesn't have to fight the party alone, and the PCs are going to have multiple vampires to deal with, no longer being able to just gank on her. On the flip side, a more playful, cunning Valenta would make for a great rogue or even a monk if flavored correctly, with the Way of Shadow allowing her to literally vanish and teleport between the many dark halls of Castle Ravenloft in pursuit of any nosy, investigating party members. Stunning Strike and martial arts in particular can show an intimate understanding of humanoid biology via her torture sessions and experimentation. And perhaps her bite attack can allow her to regain not just hit points, but also key points over the course of the fight. Likewise, for Valenta as a rogue, while the assassin might seem ideal at first, I would personally recommend the Phantom Rogue as the go-to subclass for Valenta, moving through walls, dealing damage to multiple enemies when targeted, bloody sneak attacks, and collecting the souls of the departed as she kills them, so that even in death, her torment and playtime with them never ends. Valenta is also known to wear an amulet from Strahd, given as a wedding gift and made from the same magical components that he used to create his crystal heart, which is a large arcane construct that serves as one of his main sources of magical protection. Its destruction is also a goal that is outlined to the party frequently in the module. As such, this amulet offers her a similar degree of protection in the form of having 20 temporary hit points, the loss of which causes the amulet to shatter and for Valenta herself to enter into an utter rage. As such, it is recommended that she be encountered near the Heart of Sorrow within Castle Ravenloft, where she can serve as a mini-boss for the party to encounter as they start exploring the castle and taking out Strahd's protections. With all this in mind, how you choose to run her roleplay-wise and combat-wise and all that is really up to you, but I've used each of these different versions in Valenta at my table, and I found each one to provide its own interesting challenge depending on the party. If you have a party that's very caster-heavy or doesn't have a lot of physical presence, I find the approach of her barbarian form is a very good way to provide a deadly challenge. Likewise, if you have a mainly martial or physical group, her rogue and or monk forms can help supersede their physical defenses, whilst also allowing her to keep the fight in her favor. As such, in lieu of having a magic item for this video, I've decided to create three different versions of Valenta based on each of these three different approaches that I have talked about. We have a barbarian one, a rogue one, and a monk one, and they're all linked in the description below for you guys to use in your games. Their design philosophy is heavily influenced by Matt Colville's action-oriented monsters, so I will warn that ahead of time. But with that, that's our coverage of Valenta Popovsky, third bride of Strahd, everyone. I want to thank all of you guys for watching, and I really do insist that you check out all of these different sources for great advice on running and modifying Curse of Strahd to feel a little bit more cohesive and interesting. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, and press the little bell icon to be notified of future videos. And also, please comment down below how you guys have run or encountered Valenta in your various different types of games. And also, let me know what you guys would like to see in upcoming videos. But until then, I'll see you guys next time.